one of the coolest and most decorated players of his or any other generation. Just, just the eight, just the eight All-Ireland senior football medals. But he's here tonight to tell us why winning off the pitch will always be more important. Would you please welcome the mighty Michael Dara McCauley. <laughs> Getting some coppers flashbacks, look at out there now. Uh, I was just about to say block booking and coppers tonight, <laughs> fella. How you keeping? Good form? Um, You're looking well? Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get myself in these situations that I'm on the Late Late Show, but here I am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's all good, yeah. It's uh, like so many people know you from being out on the pitch, doing your stuff, Footballer of the Year, All Stars, All Ireland medals, um, lots of battles on the pitch. What they may not know, though, is that the battle that you and your family have been going through recently off the pitch and how you guys have been dealing with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I suppose, look, you guys were on to me in, in October, September, October, about having a little chat coming in. I don't even know what we were going to talk about, the, the football or the birds and the bees or whatever. But um, the, uh, I suppose the only thing that was going on in my mind at the time was organ donation. You're kind of saying why. So I suppose at the time, my sister was going through a very difficult time. Um, she was on 24 hours of oxygen in the matter, uh, heart and lung ward. Um, it was your sister Margaret. That's my sister Margaret, apologies, yeah. Uh, so, and I suppose just to contextualise, so she has um, lung fibrosis, which is pretty rampant throughout my family, um, which we, we know all about it now because when my dad had it and he went through the whole transplant process, Unfortunately, he got called for a transplant three times. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't lucky enough to get it on those occasions. So we were going through, when he was, got in touch the last time, we were going through the whole process again. Um, so Margaret was, had, a, had a very tough journey since, since I've seen you last. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. But um, luckily we have, we, have, we have a Margaret here today, which is, which is fantastic, yeah. Which is brilliant. Um... You're saying there that this disease has been in the family and you lost your dad to the same disease. How much more difficult did that make all of this going through the same transplant journey with Margaret? Yeah, look, look it is tough. So some of the nurses that were, were treating my dad 10 years ago were, were, were the same nurses that were, that were there again. Um, so it's, look, it, it, it's, it's hard, especially like, like the, the hope and the, the power of a transplant is, is, is unbelievable. Um, so it's not like possibly some cancers or some other diseases where you're kind of slowly downhill. This is like, a, it's downhill with the possibility of this amazing uphill, which we, we just didn't get from my dad. So we're like, you're always holding on to this unbelievable bit of hope. Um, so and, and a transplant is, is really the only thing that... Sorry, a transplant can... is the, the, there's no cure for this. The medicines can, can slightly slow things down, but the only way out of this is a transplant uh, for a, a significant kind of way of life. So um, that's, the, that's what your, your, your kind of chips in on. So where were you then whenever you heard the news that Margaret had, had got a match? Well, yeah, so I suppose as we, as we said that like, we were, we were really all in on this magic transplant. We've been waiting, we know exactly the process. We've been called three times for my dad to get one and he just, he, he never got one. And I'll never forget, she doesn't notice where, where, where I was uh, when I got the first phone call that she was getting one. I was sitting in the gym on the bench press and I got the phone call because I was, I, was, I was on alert, so I had the phone on me. And I got the phone call that she got it and I ended up just, like, just bursting into tears. I didn't even know I needed to do that, but I suppose it's just been weighing on us so heavily for the last while. Um, I think people just thought I couldn't lift the weight uh, in the gym, but <laughs> I could. Um, but, um, but it was just, and I beckoned, went down, ran into the Matter Hospital. Uh, so it's, it's a roller coaster. Look, and I think, I think people, uh, so many people haven't been affected here from transplant, but, but the power of it from seeing where Margaret was and where Margaret is now is, is, is an unbelievable story. And it's, it's not easy, like Jesus Christ, it's not easy. Uh, but the, the power of it is unbelievable. So I think it's, um, it, it was an amazing day and we're just so grateful she got it. Uh, what's amazing is uh, I'm actually looking at Margaret here, uh, smiling at us in, in the audience. Um, Margaret, since, since uh, this journey began, you've been through the absolute ringer. Yeah. Um, four months in the hospital. Uh, what, was, what was the worst part of all of that? Uh, yeah, it was certainly um, a journey. Uh, I spent a bit of time in the hospital um, before my transplant because I was unwell. Um, I then got the transplant, um, which was amazing, um, obviously, to get that phone call and to hear that things were going ahead because I had been called the week before. 
um, and you're worked up and um, you sit around in your gown and you're ready for theatre and everything um, and then to be told that actually you no know, things aren't going ahead so trying to deal with that is really hard. Um, but I was really, really lucky that um, only a week later I got another call um, and they worked me up again um, and this time it was a match and they were, uh, that my tr the transplant was going ahead for me. Um, so that was the start of a bit of a journey that I, I don't think I had really considered um, the recovery part. Um, the recovery was definitely a journey. Uh, you're so focused on the operation and getting the transplant and the phone call. Um, that I hadn't really considered the recovery afterwards and, and that was definitely quite a journey um, for me. Um, one of my, my big goal um, in that journey was trying to get home in time to watch the Late Late Toy Show with my kids. Um, I have three kids, Rebecca at 13, um, Clara at 9 and Daniel 7 who are all watching at home. Um, and. I wanted to get home. That was, you know, kind of early on. I had said my aim is to get home to watch the Late Late Toy Show. Um, so it didn't happen in that I didn't get out fully discharged, but I did get home in t for that night, which was amazing to be back home with them. And thanks to the donor, I mean, without without the donor and the donor's family and the decision they made, you know, that now I can look forward to next year's Toy Show. This isn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, and look, look Margaret's absolutely mortified being <laughs> so here. She hates doing this, but she knows how, how important it is to tell, to tell that story, yeah. Um, th this disease runs in the family. Uh, have you been tested? Uh, look, it, it's all over my family, unfortunately. My, my, my brother has it as well in Australia. He's, he's doing pretty good at the moment, and I, I haven't been tested at the moment. It's, it, this is a bridge I probably have to cross in the next number of years. At the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm healthy and, and, and doing my best. But uh, So this is just some, something you don't want to do at the moment? At, at the moment, no. There's, there's no. there's no real benefit right now from doing it. I'm, I'm kind of fit and healthy and, and, and come what may in the next few years. Um, but, yeah, it's something that, like we're, 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 we'll have to deal with, yeah. Um, so that's, that's where it's at. Just listening to Margaret's story there and just listening to how things in your family didn't turn out with a happy end for your dad and then how things do turn out right. I know you're such an advocate for organ donation and the difference that that can make. Yeah, look, 100%. I suppose like people aren't affected here. People, no one wants to be on either side of this process, but unfortunately, that's where, that's where I end up. And I suppose the big ask that, that I would say is to everyone who's at home watching the Late Late Show here is to have that conversation with your family. A lot of people don't understand the process. And the most important thing you can do is have that conversation with your next of kin and your loved ones that you would like to be an organ donation. You would like to save lives. With one, if you opt in to be an organ donor, you can save seven people's lives, which is absolutely mental and the solace that that can bring to people who are in that grief ridden situation is huge and we, we, we've met those people as well. So the biggest thing and I'd, I'd ask everyone to do now because people have had the kind of half half hour conversations maybe around the house maybe tick the box on, the, on, the, on their card if you put it into your family whatsapp group that I would like to be an organ donor if the worst ever happened to me and God hoping it never does that you, you have your wishes clear and that makes a huge difference going down the line because unfortunately right now we have 600 people at the moment who are waiting for kidneys and lungs and, and hearts and everything else and they're, they're sitting there and they're waiting and they, we need the Irish population to, 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 to come forward and, and do the right thing. Michael Dara. <clears throat> Thank you so much Stella.